as I was uh, saying to you a little bit earlier, I think it's a, it's a great time to be talking about um, remote outcome measures. Um, before we get too deep into it, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about yourself? So I'm a, I'm a clinical psychologist by training and, um, and uh, you know, work in private practice a, a little bit, but mostly I'm passionate about uh, cl- clinicians um, evaluating their own uh, practice through the use of routine outcome monitoring. And so I created Novo Psych uh, back when I was doing my doctorate in psychology um, because I felt like the way that um, uh, in the healthcare system we were collecting feedback was actually pretty rudimentary. I remember sitting in this um, this lecture hall and the um, the lecturer teaching us how to like give a you know print off a survey and then give it to someone and then score it and and then calculate it and i thought oh my gosh we can do better than that and so it was through the frustration of seeing how rudimentary some of our feedback systems were in the healthcare system that i got really passionate about um uh, eliciting feedback from from clients that's awesome, uh, Ben. So I, I guess there is a little bit of a backstory there. So you've come out, you've um, had a crack at um, starting up. Uh, do you want to share a little bit about some of your journey over the years? Yeah, well, um, Novosac, it's actually oh, we started in 2012 now. And um, uh, the uh, at the time, I think iPads were invented in 2011. And so we um, initially launched an app on the iPad. And so we felt like we were sort of pioneers at the time. Um, of course, these days, everyone's using iPads and technology in their practices. Um, and, and thank goodness for that, because it just improves practice so much. And um, yeah, so I started NovoPsych um, with, uh, with two friends of mine, one of whom was a medical doctor and the other who, who was the IT specialist. And we, um, uh, we just came up with this idea and, and, um, and launched it. And then since then, we've had you know huge organic growth. Um, we 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 were uh, worldwide at one stage, and then um, sold off the US business, and now really focusing on on Australia, um, and where we feel like there's uh, probably some um, well a, a real appetite for uh, collecting uh, measurements about the progress of patients in the mental health setting. So, um, with with the focus on Australia, um, what what brings you into that focus? What what is it about Australia that um, that that makes that a, a requirement rather than trying to do one size fits all across across the world? Yeah, great great question. So so at the start, we thought, all right, we'll cast our wet re- our net really wide and we'll um, we'll go global, and that worked really well, especially when um, you know we were one of the first um, players in in the market space. But what's happened since then is that there's different requirements for different um, jurisdictions. There's different privacy settings that different um, uh, countries need. Um, And also in the mental health setting, there's uh, different countries focus on different protocols and different assessments. So, for example, in Australia, um, one of the most widely used assessments to measure mental health outcomes is called the K10, the the KETS the Kessler um, Psychological Distress Scale. Um, And so while in Australia we use that a lot, over in the US they use other assessments like the GAD7 and um, PHQ, for example. And so um, really it's about knowing what the clinicians want, the culture around the clinicians, and also knowing the, the, um, uh, the, the policy settings that are incentivizing different ways of interacting with clients. In the Australian context, some of the funding that's, that's, uh, that's given for mental health purposes, um, is, it requires some outcome monitoring to occur. And so that means we've been able to tailor our um, offering in NovoPsych to really fit ex- the exact purpose that Australian uh, mental health clinicians are needing. I think it's a really good um, experience there uh, to uh, reach that conclusion. Uh, you know, the Western world is uh, very advanced in healthcare terms, but it also has a lot of jurisdictional differences. Uh, and I think that applies to all software 
not just uh, NovoPsych, um, you know, whether it's APP compliance or some of the um, idiosyncrasies within each of the professions within the healthcare sector. Um, and um, as you probably know, with um, digital health and uh, communication standards between clinical systems here in Australia, that's quite unique to Australia. Um, and yet, you know, we do have this kind of abundance of technology. You can go online, you can go on the internet, you can go to a Play Store or um, or the uh, uh, Apple equivalent, and um, you can tell I'm an Android user. Uh, but uh, that means that all of a sudden there are all these software that's basically trying to make a claim that it's something that you could use. Um, but the reality is that you do need to know a little bit more about the jurisdiction that you're actually operating. So is, is that kind of been your experience as well? Am I paraphrasing that? Correctly, absolutely, absolutely right. Um, you know the requirements that um, what we were finding um, back when we split off the US side of our business is that there was all these US requirements that our US users were asking for, and all these Australian requirements Australian users were asking for, and that we knew that we needed to to build out. And so we split it. We split it off. Um, and um, the US the US version of Novosac is running happily with their their, their new owners. And then the Australian version, um, uh, we're able to really uh, put all of our uh, energy into making it compliant for Australia and making it fit for purpose here. That's great. That's great. Um, yeah, I really see what NovoPsych has produced as being a digital health uh, clinical tool. Uh, and, um, and I love the fact that it does have that Australian focus uh, now. Um, the big hot topic at the moment, uh, Ben, as you know, is um, how does mental health um, and uh, a lot of healthcare uh, practitioner types now uh, deal with um, uh, the lockdowns and uh, and the isolation? Um, and there's a few things I want to try and get through in this live stream with you around what NovoSci can do, even if there wasn't a COVID-19. Um, but I'm wondering if we could sort of, you know, work our way through it where we sort of talk about the um, the ways to use NovoPsych uh, in practice uh, in a face-to-face -face kind of um, uh, engagement model with the client versus uh, working remotely and using video or voice or instant messaging uh, to uh, to be able to facilitate a um, uh, a consultation. Um, yeah. Can you take us through a couple yeah. of um, similarities and differences between um, well, how you propose NovoPsych gets used? Well, I think... Um well, hasn't hasn't coronavirus just thrown a spanner in the works for many, many <laughs> practices? And I suppose my observation would be that the the practices that have done all the groundwork well um, and uh, um, have uh, great IT systems pre coronavirus have probably adapted pretty well. You know, for example, if a practice is using, um, you know, Core Plus, which my private practice uses. So, Yanni, thank you for creating such a great product with Core Plus. Um, where, you know, because it's a cloud-based system, we're able to just easily transition over to working remotely. And so, um, uh, whereas some of the other practices who haven't been so digitally savvy before coronavirus have really had to step up their game quickly. Um, for NovoPsych users, the process has been pretty seamless. So traditionally, the way that NovoSac works is you've got an iPad in your room, the, the patient is sitting opposite you, and you um, key in which assessment you'd like um, the client to uh, take. And so in um, NovoSac, we've got assessments for um, depression, anxiety, stress, post-traumatic stress disorder, ADHD, autism, social anxiety, pretty much every psychological issue you, you think of, NovoPsych has a measurement tool for that. And so what we'd do traditionally is we'd get the iPad, we'd key in which assessment we'd like them to take, we'd hand the physical iPad over, and then they'd take it. And then when they're done, it would they'd hand it back. The clinician would enter in the password to get the results and to unlock the iPad. And then it would give the uh, clinician some really useful metrics around um, and it would score the assessment up and it would provide percentile ranks and metrics comparing um, the patient sitting in front of you to the um, to the uh, uh, other clinical samples or the normal population. And so um, that's how it's worked traditionally. Now, a few years ago, we created a version of NovoPsych that's so that you could use it without an iPad. Um, so that you could um, send a link to the uh, patient 
And then through that link, they could take the assessment on their phone or on their own computer. And so we found that pre-coronavirus, the take up of that new system, you know, it was okay. Um, you know, uh, some of the um, practices who were doing a lot of remote teleconference sort of stuff before coronavirus were using it. But really the vast majority of people were using the iPad version and wanting to, um, you know, do it the traditional way. And now since coronavirus, you know, pretty much all of our users have switched over to the new version and, and are sending uh, the the links to their patients remotely. Um, and and so that's was in huge uptake in this new version of NovoSight. And thankfully, you know, it was there and waiting and ready for everyone um, to, to do it. Um, but what it means is that you don't have to be in the room with the person. You can still get feedback about where they're at um, in terms of their mental health symptoms, whether they're in the suburb over, or the other side of the country. So that's great. So um, in terms of uh, the typical workflow, so we've, we, you've sort of got that um, uh, option now that if it's a in in uh, person um, scenario, there's the uh, the interface that's on the tablet that can be um, presented to the client to complete those surveys. Um, and you're also doing feedback as well. Is that part of it? Uh, you're doing some yeah. feedback for the sessions themselves. Yeah, so one one thing that I'm really passionate about is uh, psychologists and, and mental health clinicians in general, and in fact, all healthcare providers, getting feedback about from their patients in real time about the patient's experience um, of the service. You know, essentially, healthcare is a service um, industry, right? And um, we don't we want to you know improve clinical outcomes. That's that's one of the key things that that um, practitioners are seeking to do. But also we're seeking to provide a service that the client is satisfied with. And so what built into NovoPsych is the capacity to measure clinical outcomes over time. So um, for example, it's really typical for me in my private practice to see people who are say on the 99th percentile for depression in session number one when they see me. And then over the course of say six to 10, to 15 sessions, um, I would hope if treatment has been successful, that with gen, uh, would would see that 99 score on depression come down to maybe 95 in the in the first few sessions and come down ultimately to below 90. So that's how I know I've done a good job clinically. Um, and we know that there's going to be a huge amount of variation depending on you know lots of client factors. Um, you know, not everyone's going to benefit from treatment um, uh, for various reasons. Um, so NovoPsych was originally designed to track treatment process um, progress. We've also got in NovoPsych some satisfaction rating tools so that the psychologists can get a sense about how the patient experienced the session. We know that one of the number one predictors of treatment success um, for mental health patients is the therapeutic alliance. That's the relationship between the psychologist and the client. If the client trusts the psychologist, think that, thinks that the skills and techniques that the psychologist has been talking about are useful, then that is a serious predictor of later outcomes. And so um, it, within NovoPsych, uh, we've got some relationship uh, therapeutic alliance measures that can tell the uh, psychologist, you know, from the get-go, whether they're really fitting with that client or not.